the very, very beginning, it was my mother that she said when she saw, would see me around the house, it made her think of dance. Um, which was kind of unusual, because, you know, in the 50s in Montreal, it's not wasn't exactly a common, uh, you know, thing that kids did. But she said she saw dance, and uh, my sister took dance lessons. So I ended up one day showing up to a dance class uh, in Montreal, and from there, the years uh, passed. I was there for a few years, and the teacher from the school where I took class, she approached my parents and she said, he needs to go to Toronto, he needs to go to the National Ballet School. I was blessed to have wonderful parents. They respected um, each one of us for what we wanted to do. Uh, and when I was offered to come to school here, uh, there was uh, no resistance from my parents whatsoever. My dad was a businessman, uh, and he had no um, negativity towards, towards me wanting to dance. So there I was in Toronto. A, a totally new world, uh, you know, from where I lived in Montreal, uh, and of course the language being different, um, but I adapted to it very quickly. And then I went into the company for a year, and that was, uh, it was kind of where I started questioning what was I going to do with dance. And after being in the company for a year, there was a big transition in the National. They were bringing in Nureyev for the first time, and they were doing a six-month tour across the States. And I kind of felt that, you know, holding a pole on stage for months on end was not going to be satisfying. When I left the National, the company, I went and did some classes in Paris and amazing classes with Maggie Black in, uh, in New York and sort of got a new, sort of a new fire towards dance and still from that point started working with different companies throughout the 70s. I knew, uh, even as a teenager, that pure ballet was not for this body. Uh, it was not going to be, you know, my career. So, but the training in ballet remained very important to me. Uh, so even, so when I had the company, uh, you know, we would do Tai Chi and we would do uh, other forms of movement. The sort of the ballet based remain very dominant. I met Lindsay in 1974, but reconnected with him when he came to Toronto to perform. The minute he arrived in Toronto, he says you, he invited me to participate in his two productions. His theatricality uh, was appealed to me. He gave you a lot of freedom on stage if you could hold the attention of the public. So there was a certain sense of freedom that I hadn't experienced before on stage until I met him. I came back from working with Lindsay for a year and I was ready to do like more, maybe a little bit more dance than theater. Uh, and 
David Earle and Peter Randazzo, they were very serious artists and at the same time very playful um, and respectful. I felt with them that they they like my dancing. They, they, they like the way that I approach dance. Uh, and again, you know, open the door for me to, to, to be part of what they did uh, on a full scale. Uh, so I have only, you know, reconnaissance towards them. Uh, for that, for that period. Every company that I worked with, I learned something, you know. Nothing needs to be thrown away. Um, and not necessarily learn something in dance, That's just in, in the way maybe that people work together, um, the way that artistic director treats their dancer, uh, a lot of that information became part of what I was to, to when, when it was time for me to have my own company. I felt I was ready to, to do something on my own. I felt I had, you come to the edge of a cliff and you have to take that step. And uh, it was certainly nothing against TDT, it was just that I was ready and I was, I felt like so many ideas were sort of brewing in my head that needed to be to be out there I started working towards towards that and I had a lot of help from Monique Michaud in, in uh, who was the director of the of the Canada Council, the dance department. So she helped me a lot, getting you know, making getting a board of director, all the things that are needed. <laughs> besides, you know, besides pointing your feet and getting on stage. So it took a couple years, you know, of uh, but the creative juice was there. I kind of had two companies. The first company I had, I was kind of looking for characters, people that had a lot of characters, almost more than their dance skills was secondary. The second company, and that first company lasted about seven years, and the second company was kind of the opposite. I was looking for people that are well-trained, and I was going to teach them the fun part of being theatrical. I actually remember when I first saw her, um, it was at, at the time the, the uh, cafeteria or where we had dinner, 
was on Jarvis Street. I think it was 410 Jarvis Street. And I remember just peeking up into the window on the main floor and she was sitting there. Um, that was the first time I saw Claudia. There was a period where I was doing a lot of Tai Chi and she had joined uh, uh, Toronto Dance Theater. She was there from 76 to 1980, I would say, and then started working, we started working together a lot towards the different shows that, you know, uh, Night Clown, uh, Bad Weather, L'Hotel Perdu, all of those, Brass Fountain. She was certainly always very close to the creative process. It, it felt very connected. Uh, you know, the dancers were generous. They gave a lot of themselves. Um, and that in, that in itself was like a gift. And it was, you know, ultimately essential <laughs> to have the magic behind, behind the works. When you're creating something, it has its time. Like what I created in 1982, I couldn't have created two years later. It belonged to that time span, you know? Um, so I felt that everything had its time for that particular work. At the time that the company folded, I had a, a chronic uh, injury, hip injury, and that injury, for some reason, really um, affected me um, creatively, and it affected me mentally. It, uh, I never before that had any kind of uh, confidence problem. <laughs> I would just go for it. And not being able to dance anymore, combined with the council approaching me for closing the company, having this, that injury sort of kind of stopped me from fighting for what I felt I should have fought for, which is to keep the company. And and the work was never the same after that. I am happy that I did what I did with full force. I never held back. Uh, if I had an idea that I felt needed to get on stage. Uh, I fought for it until it got on stage. And, and at the end of the show, uh, when you're standing there to take a bow and you feel your entire body as, you know, given everything it has, um, that to me is 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 my memory is what I, I like to remember is having done it with full force.